in this episode of CPR Ford Garage, making chocolate milkshake. Oh yeah. Hopefully this engine is not junk. Just look at that. Oh yeah. I think you need to get a better. Oh yeah. So this is a Core 97 460 that I picked up from a buddy for $200 because it was a Core motor that was turned in. It had blown head gaskets is what he told me. And he has already had the heads off and looked at it. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now you can pick these up pretty dang cheap. 200 is not out of the norm at all. You could maybe even get one that has high miles and was running for that much. See right there, made in Lima, Ohio, 11196. That is why that is why 460s are called a Lima series engine. They're also called a 385 series because they have a 3.85 stroke, the 460 does anyway. As you can see the issue with these, along with most Ford engines, is the exhaust ports are horrible. They took an already tiny port for what size this engine is and I can't tell if this one has air injection or no it actually doesn't look like it does but the exhaust ports are tiny and horrible so F3 TE heads they don't make a ton of power even ported so what are we gonna do about that well I picked these up pick these up off of Facebook classifieds And they are Pro Comp heads that were secondhand but not used. They had been bolted on the engine and the guy decided to go with something bigger and better. So I picked them up for a thousand bucks having not been run. And I'm not a head porter or engine builder by trade, but for the money they look pretty dang good to me. So that's all on that. There'll be a whole other episode about the heads if you're interested in finding out how good the Pro Comp heads are. So I went to the gas station and got a nice large diabetes. So we will get started tearing this down and see how it is. Okay, so we don't know what's in here. Could be oil, could be antifreeze, could be who knows what. Well, it looks like there's oil in it. Got some coming out so far. Uh, oh, that's water. Yep, that's uh. Well, yeah, that was water, and then there's some oil. <laughs> Is that slimy? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some more oil in it. Ew. That's a, that's a real good sign. I think she's probably going to need some bearings at least. <laughs>
So if you see one of those and you're like, what is that? I don't know what to do with that. It won't work on this engine. Take the bolt out of the middle, undo it from the radiator hose, and you can just pull it all off. Get yourself a filter bung that'll fit right there. And then an FL1A filter will screw right onto it or a Wix 51515 or whatever it is that all these old Fords use. So as you can see, the later model EFI engines, the pistons were up closer to the deck, whereas the old ones, they'd be way down in there. So what I would like to do is, it's up to the machine shop really, but I'll see if this can just be honed in new rings and re-ring and re-bearing it and do the heads and everything. The heads and intake are EFI only. I think there might be some adapters to do carb stuff, but it gets kind of weird and stupid expensive for what it is. So the cheapest way to do one of these, get a good short block, put older carb heads on it, like some dove heads or what have you, or get some aluminum aftermarket heads, put those on and put on an intake for a carb motor. And there you go, cheap 460 power. Another tip, keep all your old parts if you can until you're done. Like, obviously cam and lifters we're not going to reuse, but we'll keep all of those to compare them to new parts that we order. This is probably going to need like some business. <coughs> Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, that's a little, that, that's a mess. There's a mess. Okay, so let's talk about why I chose this engine. Uh, like I said, it's a 97 460 out of probably an F250, 350 pickup. I don't think they were still putting them in bands at that point, maybe they were. But the reason I chose it, as far as being a 460, is I wanted to make about 500 horsepower on as cheap of a budget as I could. Um, the plan is this 460, the Pro Comp heads, Wind Stealth Intake, uh, Roller Rockers of course, um, I'm looking at a Howard's cam that I think is about 609 lift on both and 230 duration at 50 and like 278, I'm sorry, yeah, 278 total duration I believe. That's the one I'm looking at, their cam lifters, uh, roller timing set, valve springs, retainers, Anyway, so it's going to get a carb. I'm looking at those new brawler carbs, but I'm kind of on the fence about a 750 or an 850. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. Um, I feel like a 750 is probably too small. I feel like an 850 is going to be like just pouring gas out on the ground anytime I go drive anywhere. So much for that, I was going to take a picture of all the bolts hanging out so that I knew which length ones went where, but oh well, I guess I'll figure it out later.
that, just like butter. Now, save this piece. Later 460s are externally balanced, and this piece is not easy to find. Oh, I don't know that anybody makes an aftermarket. The Woodruff key is in a different spot, so I'm gonna have to pop that out real quick. that. Now, if this piece gets a groove in it like this one has, where the seal rides, that's okay. They make a speedy sleeve you can pound on there that about 45% of the time will fix the problem. Okay, this is the Fable flat tappet camshaft. Now, don't believe everything you've heard. You can still run them with the right oil and common sense. I'm gonna go for this guy. I'll show you some things to look for real quick. So if they're too tough to get out, they might have to go out the bottom. This one looks pretty dang good so far. You're looking for a good machine surface. And the bottom of the tappet should actually be convex. It should have a crown to it. See the nice machine surface so they rotate on the cam as the cam rotates. That guy might have to go out the bottom. But as long as we can get him pulled up enough, what we can do is get them off of the cam loads pull the cam out the front and then knock them down into the oil pan. Ooh, that's not a good sign. They're either all smudged up or, or this sucker has ate some lobes. So what happened is they stopped putting enough zinc in the oil because it shortens the life of catalytic converters. Not Cadillac converters. Cat catalytic and so not having zinc in the oil drastically shortens the lifespan of flat tap cams there is more friction but I looked into doing a roller cam for the 460 and it's just really not worth it for my purpose maybe for yours Well, I'll be damned if WD-40 didn't kind of save the day. Thought I was going to have to pound them out the bottom, but I think I'm getting them. And they're all coming out good so far, so they must, they must just be a little oil gunk with coked up oil. Sprayed a little WD-40 in there and really give them the business with the vice grips, which is the preferred tool. Oh yeah. Oh that's oh yeah. Just look at that. That is beautiful. Now, they've all looked okay. I wouldn't say great. They've got some wear, but none of them have ate a lobe, which is what you hear with flat tappets. 
but these I'm going to have to make sure are really clean and good. You cannot have any sticking of flat tap and lifters in the bore because it will eat a load. They have to be able to rotate. That's how they work. So I'll get the rest of these out and we'll look at them all and see how they are and yank the cam out. is nasty hopefully that's not an ominous sign we'll see okay keep the bag open okay can you show the bag oh it's pooping <laughs> can you show the bag to the camera real quick <laughs> so, this is our oil pan bolts bag bag and tag your bolts that way you don't forget where they go when you go to put this together six months later it's pooping what happens when you get water in there. Looks like watery oil, WD-40, and some rust. Oh my, oh look at that. It's like chocolate like pudding. Peanut. It's almost like chocolate peanut, peanut butter. Chocolate peanut, peanut butter. butter. Yeah. It's got some Nutella in there, probably. Oh man. Gross. This is gonna be fun, but gross. Well, yeah, yeah, get the oil pump and pickup off first and we'll just throw that in the pan for now so we can finish getting her apart. I'd like to make it to the machine shop today to drop it off. Ford is really good about numbering rods and caps. Just checking to make sure they are before I yank them all out. So we've got a three right here. So 
So it should be the third cylinder back on the forward bank, which we're upside down now, so I'm kind of screwed it up, but one, two, three. So yeah, that is three. And what you're looking for to determine number one cylinder is this bank is farther ahead than this bank. So that one looks to be numbered. We'll just check real quick and make sure they all are, and then we'll start knocking out pistons. Oh my goodness. Who wants to get a chocolate milkshake? Me! Okay, come here, I'll give you some. Here. There you go. Oh, you want a taste? Yeah. I did have some hope that maybe uh, this could just be honed and re-ringed and crank polished, but unless this sucker was shut down right away, there's probably some bearing damage, which we're about to find out. So, since they are all numbered, I'm just going to go with whichever ones are available to me. It looks like number eight and number four would like to go first. This bearing stayed when I pulled the cap off, but here, as you can see, it is a forward bearing. Most likely, this has never been rebuilt. Also, if it was undersized, it would have that stamped in there, like .003 or whatever undersized it was. So, Let's get the rod tap down a little bit. Okay. That was a good method right there. Sometimes if you can't, if um, you want a littler tap than with the big, the top part, use the bottom. So, there's no undersize stamp in there. Um, and we've got 9 of 96 date stamp Ford part numbers. So that, I believe, would be an original bearing from everything I can tell. Okay. I am going to take the main caps off. And we will pull the crank out. So the rear one has the rear main seal, which... I thought in these would have been a two-piece by now, but I guess not. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 
That's ugly looking, but well, the crank surface doesn't look bad. My unprofessional opinion is that it could probably just be polished, except for there's that one little ding right there that some guy put in there when he was knocking the pistons out, but we won't talk about that. Yahtzee! Oh yeah, she's wiped. Definitely had some debris in there. Now also on the main caps, Ford is nice enough to give you a number and a direction that it faces. So, don't know if they do that anymore. Thrust bearing, important to check out, looks pretty good. Controls the front to back movement of the crank. And if you have a torque converter or clutch problem or some other kind of problem, it will actually just eat that big time. Some more chocolate milk slime. Chocolate milk water makes everything real slippery. But, so, this is, this is how you lift out a big block Ford crank. Yeah. So, this is how you go ahead and lift it out of here without. I'm gonna have to touch the block. There's no way around it. Yep. Don't let that fall on your toe. So, pick up the bearing shells that fell in there. Um, just a few more minimal things that I probably won't even show. Digging the main bearings out, digging the rear main seal out, popping out freeze plugs, all of the galley plugs. I take them all out. Don't leave it up to the machine shop because they very well might just uh, not take them out and then you won't have a clean engine. All right, so that's pretty much what a bare block should look like when you're gonna take it to the machine shop. It's all cleaned up, bearings are all out, all the plugs are out of it, all the core plugs, all the oil galley plugs. Main caps put back on where they go and snugged. Rear main is out of it. Scraped off the worst of the gasket material and the grease. That looks like it needs a little touch up right there. Still cr trying, still trying to get the uh, head dowels out of there, the cylinder head dowels. They're not wanting to go, so you know, scrape it off, wash it down with a can of brake clean, wash it down with a can of brake clean or three. You know, help your engine guy out, and he'll help you out. Don't bring him some nasty, messy turd that he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna spend three hours cleaning that, but. Anyway, let's take a look at the Borskis. So this is, that's pretty much what you want to see in these situations. Still got cross hatch. Look at that, pretty good. Hone would probably clean that baby up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's not bad, got a little crud in there because I didn't get it cleaned out good enough. That is doable now. Flip the engine stand 3000 here. Yeah. Uh, give me some of that. So, this other side, bank one, driver's side on old Ford V8s anyway, is bank two, passenger side bank one. This is a slightly less than optimal. You can see where the piston was sitting right about there with water on top of it. And also there. And there. That's after I cleaned it. So that's really, you can hear that, that's really got some scale to her, so. Yep, if it wasn't for this damn side, it'd be pretty good. This must have been the side with the blown gasket. Another area of concern if you have a blown head gasket is the deck warping. 
which is not super common on iron blocks, a little more common on aluminum blocks. So I'm gonna have them check that. It's gonna need cleaned up pretty good before we can, but basically they lay a straight edge across and see if we got any low spots right around this region. That's where it usually happens. And if so, they just have to machine that deck, which we might wanna do anyway to get compression bumped up a little bit. So this, I put the rag there obviously, but that's not what you wanna see in these situations. Here's the crank. Pretty good. Might be savable with the polish. Uh, other than that little dinger that some guy put in like the number five journal or one. I can't remember which one it was. It was one of the front ones. So we'll hose that down with brake clean as well. That's what you want to hand to your machinist. Um, take care of them. They'll take care of you. So we're going to have crankshaft is going block only with the main caps nothing else uh, the, they're all snug down in the place where they go and then rods and pistons and I will hose those down too to kind of get the chocolate milk out of them because they get oh my god, god look at that that's it for now I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something about engines you didn't already know I We'll be at the mercy of the machine shop here for the next little while. And I am working on shortening the bed, so hopefully I'll have that episode up soon. Uh, as always, please like, share, subscribe. Also, you can now follow me on Instagram at CPR Ford Garage. It's all lowercase, no spaces, no special characters. Thanks for watching.